yeah, the bigger question is really about uh, switching between different indicators for a trailing stop loss. Yeah, so maybe sometimes you might want to use the indicator that's the maximum distance away, and maybe sometimes you want to use an indicator that's a minimum distance away, the one that's closer. So there are a bunch of videos, you know, that show um, switching between indicators and stuff. So Paul, if you want, um, I can look up some of those there for you. But just to show you what the main setting is here. So, yeah, so there is one main setting that determines whether Blackbird uses the closest indicator, right, to where market is, or whether Blackbird uses the furthest away, you know, the widest away indicator, right? And so, all right, there we go. So let's, let's get a, um, let's use, there we go. Let's use the parabolic SAR trailing one there from the quick list. And so in the trailing actions, yeah, what determines whether, so let's say, yeah, so we need, so we need at least two trailing rolls um, and using two different indicators here. So let's, let's actually make this a more practical example here. And so I'm just going to go with, uh, and where'd it go? Oh, there we go. All right. Now yeah, let's just go with the super trend as an example there. All right. So we can see. So in the action, we have, all right, one of these trailing rolls wants to follow the super trend, and the other trailing roll wants to use the parabolic SAR. So how do you know which one? you know, Blackbird's going to follow. Well, that is determined by the evaluate using here, right? The evaluate using here. So uh, your choices are action closest to price, right? So that's the default, you know, um, trading standard, you know, for stop losses is you always tighten your stop loss, um, you know, as more profit gets gets made, you tighten that stop loss to lock it in. Right, so you keep moving your, so moving your, yeah, you know, right. So this is action, but what is the action doing? Well, the action's moving your stop loss, right? But of course the action is a little more generic here. Um, so the evaluate is keeping your stop loss closest to price. So that's the default one. So in other words, whichever one of these two indicators is closest, you know, to where the market price is, that's the one that gets picked. Um, so if you want to keep your stop losses wider, right, to widen them, then you want to you want to use the indicator that's furthest away from price, right, or furthest from price. And so that means whichever one of these indicators, you know, is the furthest away um, from the price. Obviously, you know, uh, depending on what the trade direction is you know, whatever indicator is furthest away, then that's the one that Blackbird will uh, will pick or, or use. So, all right, so that's it. So the answer to Ball's question is just, you know, pick the evaluate using, you know, according to, you know, how you want to trade, you know, uh, for that system. So, um, and then there's there's two other choices here. So you could lock in, um, you could lock in a trailing roll here, right? So, um, so first action to trigger, well, you have to be using a trigger here. Um, and so this example doesn't have any triggers, but normally before you start trailing, you wait for some other condition to occur, such as waiting for, you know, 10 or maybe 15 ticks of profit, and then you start trailing, right? So that's what a trigger is, is you're waiting for um, something else to happen at first, such as profit, you know, very common, right? Or when you're using indicators, obviously before you move a stop loss to an indicator, you have to verify 
that price is on the right side of the indicator. You know, like a lot of times the super trend, even the parabolic SAR can be on the wrong side of the market, um, you know, to set your stop loss. So, so when you're using indicators here, um, you know, you should have a trigger that validates that the market um, is on the right side of that indicator or the indicators on the right side of the market, you know, before you start trailing that indicator. Um, so, all right. So a lot of times you do use triggers when you're setting up trailing rules. And so you could lock in, you know, whatever indicator, you know, basically whatever action and that would be the indicator. And in this situation, that would be the indicator. You'd lock that in for the remainder of the trade. And then, of course, you just have the opposite, right? The last action to trigger. So whichever one of these um, triggers, um, you know, tr uh, trigger last, then that that indicator would be the only indicator that gets used throughout the life of the trade um, once it triggers. So, all right, so there's the four options that you have um, for telling Blackbird which you know, which of your trailing rules has priority. And so, okay, great, great. All right, so Bala says that answered the question. Good deal.